right, here we go. The, um, so lesson 15, um, as a preemptive bidding, it can be called, it can be called week twos and week threes. And in the handout here, it's called defensive bidding. Well, basically talking about the same thing, same bids. And this is kind of counterintuitive to people that are brand new to bridge. Is is when they when they learn about this bid, it's like, wait, let me let me think about this for a second. I'm going to bid more when I have less. And yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so one spade is stronger than two spades, and the reason is uh, really um, to try to mess up the opponents. Okay, so as we talk, as it talks about here in the handout. It's um, your intent is not to necessarily end up with a contract or even to make the contract if you if you're going to get it, but if you're you're kind of thinking that you'll get a better score by messing the opponents up. All right, so I get a lot of people focused on if I open three hearts, there's no way I'll get nine tricks with this hand. Yeah, that's probably true. Okay, but you're trying to make it that they don't find three no trump or something like that. Okay, so uh, I can tell you. Over time, if you can do it, whenever you can open a preemptive bid that you should, it will work out for a better score for your signs as you do it. It'll sometimes end up in disaster, don't get me wrong, okay? Um, but, uh, but if you play enough hands, you play, you know, you play long enough, this will, be a, this will be a bid that you definitely want to have in your repertoire um, and you definitely want to play it, okay? So it's uh, uh, week twos or threes, preemptive bids or defensive bidding. And here we go, all right? So it's opening a long, a long suit with very few high card points. Generally, most are playing as five to 10 high card points. So not very many points, right? You have a below average hand. Um, Overcalling a long suit, so it works the same way. If they open something and you jump, it would be considered weak. If you, if you bid at the lowest possible bid, that would be uh, be considered stronger over calls like we did in lesson 11 would be 10 or more points for the two level. Okay, so this would be um, weak. So again, you're, you're gonna be in that five to 10 range, all right? Jumping in a new suit over partner's opening bid. Not everybody plays this, but I would say most new players do. I actually don't play it with most partners. I still play the old way where a jump is really, really strong. But I will, I do want to emphasize, you need to talk about this with partner, all right? If partner opens and you jump, partner opens, say a diamond, and you jump to two spades, it either means like four points or it means like 17, all right? Big, big difference, all right? So talk about it with partner, which way you're going to play. Okay, so it'd be one diamond pass, two spades in this example. Is that strong or is that weak? Like I said, I play it for the most part as, as strong, which is kind of old school. <laughs> um, but in a little bit, the reason I see that people, um, what people do is, oh, I got this six or seven card suit. I'm going to jump to two spades. But they do it with like seven or eight points. And it's like, no, you need to respond one spade with that hand. So I see so many people mess this up that I, you know, I just play it the old way and I'm looking for slam. <laughs> All right. Um, jumping to game in partner suit. So say partner opens a heart and I just jump to four hearts. That would be really weak, but I've got like five hearts. So I know we got a 10 card fit. I got a bad hand, but they've got points. I don't want to let them find their fit. So you just jump to game. All right. So that would be in a form of a preemptive bid to be taking up space. And maybe you can make it. Odds are you usually do, I will tell you, okay? So you. Um, so then moving here to the next part, a little bit opening a long suit with few high card points, all right? So we're gonna leave two clubs alone. We're gonna do that in the next lesson, but two diamonds, two hearts, and two spades are your weak two bids. Two, two clubs is our strong bid, all right? But we'll do that in the next lesson. So your two diamonds, two hearts, or two spades are gonna be five to 10 high card points, generally a six card suit, and generally a good six card suit. So what does that mean? Two of the top three honors, three of the top five. I generally go, I'll go a little bit lighter. It needs to be a suit that's quality enough that could eventually be used, you know, for no Trump. Um, so 
what does that mean? Is that three of the top six? I don't know. But the cards are together, you know, something that it's that it's good enough that it'll work out. Okay. So uh, some people are like adamant. It has to be a super great suit. I'm not in that camp, but I also want to have some meat to it. So I'm not in the camp of it's way, it's way too bad. <laughs> All right. So it's got to have something to it. All right. So that's your week twos. Okay. And then the three level. So three clubs, now clubs can get in the act. Three clubs, three diamonds, three hearts, and three spades is generally a seven card suit. And I don't care about suit quality there. Still going to be that weak hand, five to 10 high card points, but you got seven of them. Who cares? Just bid three. All right. So clubs is a little bit of the, you know, oddball here, right? Uh, we really, you know, I, I tell people I open three clubs with six and a half clubs. So sometimes I will open it with six because we don't have a two club option, but two clubs is the lowest suit. So anyway, um, most of the time, you know, I'm going to have seven, but again, I play it as six and a half. <laughs> and then you can go to the four level if you want, if you want to open an eight card suit. Okay. So you're basically bidding up the line by the number of that you have in the suit. Okay. So the twos, there's generally some suit quality to it. The threes, I don't care about the suit quality, just got seven. All right. Responding to a week two opener, um, you know, basically, if you're, you know, a partner, so it's been opened by, you know, let's say you've opened two spades and I respond, partner doesn't have much. Okay. So in general, you know, we don't, you know, aren't going to get too far. But if we do have some spades with partner, then we like to look for game. Okay. Um, and, and then somebody came up with this rule of 17. Um, and it's a good little guideline to use to, to help you determine um, if you should bid game or not. So what you do with this rule of 17 is it, you add up your high card points and we'll use spades in our example here, plus the number of spades that you have. And if that's 17, there's a decent enough chance that you'll make game, you should probably bid it, all right? Um, so you say you've got a hand with 15 high card points, so you got a really good hand and you have two spades, go ahead and, and bid four spades. Say you've got a hand with 13 high card points, but you've got four spades with partner. We also get to 17, okay? So this is a guideline. Um, I will tell you your queens and jacks are kind of worthless when partners open a preemptive bid. So definitely focus on your aces and your kings and your number of trump, okay? So that's the rule of 17. Um, and it just gives you a guideline if you have a tough time visualizing how many tricks your side might be able to get. Use this as a guideline over a week two opener. It's, it's generally only used over a week two um, as opposed to a week three. Um, why have I lost my picture here? as opposed to a week three, but I still do it too then, I will tell you. <laughs> Sorry about that, I don't know what happened. Um, so you, um, it um, becomes, I'm really rattled now. Sorry, everybody. I can't seem to get, all right, we're gonna open it back up. All right, so, I'll generally use it as a guideline if partner opens a week three, but again, they don't have to have the suit quality, but they do have another trump. So it's whoever invented it or uses it or talks about it will will use it as over a week two. Um, so it kind of gives an example here of a, a two heart opener by partner, 15 high card points and three three hearts would be 18. So you generally want to bid four hearts with that hand. Over calling a week bid, again, it's the same type of thing where you have um, a weak hand, they've opened, and you want to jump and take up space. So you jump above your lowest available suit that you could bid um, of the suit, and you go up to the two or three level, depending on where you have to. It's a little tricky over a spade, for example. Recognize that two hearts is not weak. It's a regular overcall. You'd have to go to three hearts. So three hearts is kind of your you're lumped in for six or seven in the suit, but it's again, gonna be the same type of concept. You're gonna be weak. Really want to encourage you here. This really messes them up. It takes up a lot of space. When we have a better feeling, it's even their hand. And this was that weak jump shift where partners open. And again, not everybody plays this and generally I don't, <laughs> but it's up to you 
but be sure to talk about it with partner, okay? What you and your partner are playing because it makes a big difference, all right? You have like three, four points when you make this bid. So you're determining there's not game your way, you wanna take up their space. And then you jump in partner suit. So this is example again of partner opening a heart. You just jump to four hearts when you don't have, um, when you have not very many points, but you, eh, this could maybe make game. So you try to take up the space and you just go ahead and bid game. You generally have six, seven, eight points here, um, but you have a bunch of hearts, okay? Partner opens a heart, you have a 10 card fit and you go to game, baby. All right, so um, quick recap. Week two is six card suit, generally a good six card suit. Week three is, uh, we don't care about suit quality, but it's generally a seven card suit. And we jump and we're not worried about making it. And I've also seen people, well, I don't think it's really good. I only want to bid two instead of three, even though they have seven. All right, but you're telling partners something different. So it's, again, it's not about making the contract. It's about taking up the space from the opponents. That's why you want to be a little bit uh, more disciplined, we'll call it, <laughs> in first and second seat, because maybe partner is the one we're taking away the space from. So um, in third seat, go ahead and, and have at her, all right? Even second seat a little bit, but because um, now, um, anyway, just bid preempts when you can. All right, so we're going to go now to bidding some hands, and here's our first one. Oh, I don't think that is our first one. Because that doesn't look like a preempt. This looks a little more like a preempt. All right, here's our first one. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So here we go out of the gates. They opened a diamond to our right. Okay. Um, so we have a preemptive bid. Uh, we have that requisite five to 10 high card points and a six card suit and a decent six card suit. They opened a diamond. So two spades would be weak. Again, here it's labeled the same as what we play, aggressive weak jump over call, um, six plus in the suit, and that's our two spade bid, okay? So again, we're trying to take up space. You, one of the, the rules, uh, rules per se in bridge is you've said your hand is a very descriptive bid, you like don't bid again, okay? So partners, partner's the one in the driver's seat because you told partner what you have. So what I tell people is if you feel tempted to bid again, then maybe you shouldn't have done it as a weak bid. So that's usually what happens. I'll go look at their hand and like, oh yeah, you should have overcalled that. You were a little stronger or you should have opened that, okay? So just because you have a six card suit doesn't mean you do a week two. You also have to have not very many points. You can certainly open a six card suit with one spade when you have opening hand, you can open it one spade when you have 18 points. You can open when you have 13 points, all right? Six card suits are reserved for uh, weak hands, okay? So they ended up in three diamonds. Hopefully we pushed them one too high. <laughs> all right, we'll go to the next one here. You got a three diamond bid to our right. Ugh. So they did it to us, okay? So, um, and I, I wanna emphasize this. When you, uh, first of all, again, remember their objective is the same as if we do it to them. They're trying to take up our space, okay? So if any of these three hands would now bid over this three diamonds, it's gonna be showing opening hand, okay? So you don't preempt a preempt is the line that we use, okay? So I have seven, nine, 10, 13 points. I'm gonna bid three hearts, which promises five or more hearts. And it's the robots play six. I don't know what you do with five, but I promise I'd like to have six, but I don't know what else to bid here. I, I play that it's five and that I have opening hand or better. And partner then went ahead and went to game. So hopefully we landed on our feet. Um, again, the objective of that three diamond bid is that we wouldn't land on our feet. And it looks like, yeah, we're gonna have two losers and diamonds, clubs can run. So it's going to depend on how many hearts we lose, um, how many hearts we lose if we can make this contract or not. But again, they're trying the preemptive bid objective is to try to push you to a place uh, to push the opponents into a bad spot. All right. So that was bidding over a preempt. A preempt again, it was a seven card suit to our right. We can. 
we bid three hearts to show we have five or more hearts in opening hand. Seven, eight, uh, this is a bad hand. And we don't have a, a preemptive bid to bid. Partner, uh, that's an overcall. Partner overcalled diamonds. So they have 10 or more points and five or more diamonds. And they just jump to four hearts. Um, so they probably have the, the, the weak hand. Um, yes, they do. Okay, so they had the partner um, opened a heart and they just jumped to four hearts showing I have, they had eight points here and five hearts. So it's a 10 card fit. They just said, I think we can make it. Remember this bid, okay? And, and remember that this isn't a strong bid. This isn't a bid I'm interested in going to six hearts or eight, you know, it's not eight, six hearts. Interested in going to slam, okay? This is saying, I think we can make game. I don't have very much. We have a 10 card fit partner. Okay. So it's a weak bid, but longer hearts because you can do other bids with three or four hearts. Okay. If you only have three hearts here, you just bid two hearts with this hand. Okay. All right. Some people call that the weak freak. That was pretty good. Two aces is pretty nice in a singleton, but um, so I wouldn't call that your typical weak freak, but uh, certainly still the right bid. There's probably not slam their way. With, the, with our partner over. Okay, so one club, one no trump. So the thing we wanna remember here is that systems are still on, even because this one no trump bid is still um, you know, a, a no trump opener for our side. It's first bid for our side. They're basically saying at, at 15 to 17 points, they probably have club stop. Um, so stamen and transfers are still on. So I'm gonna do stamen, which is asking partner if they have uh, unfortunately, they bid hearts, which is too bad. And then um, how many points do I have? Five, nine, 11. I'll just put it in three no trump, which will say that I have four spades and I <clears throat> um, I don't have four hearts apart. Oh, so partner had both. <laughs> okay, so that's good. I'd rather play this in suit contract primarily because I don't have any help for partner in uh, clubs if that's where we'd end up. Okay, so partner had both majors. Okay. So when I <clears throat> confirmed that I didn't have four hearts, it meant that I had four spades. We follow that. So they knew they could safely go on to uh, four spades knowing that I had four spades. All right. And this way, the strong hand still ended up be the declarer. There's no reason for me to bid two spades there. Um, I can still bid three no trump like I did and partner can still put it in four spades. That's kind of a quirky little deal, but that's how you play that. All right. All right. One spade to our right. Four, six, seven. Uh, nope. So we're we uh, we're gonna pass. And two clubs. So they uh, one no trump forcing is this bid. This is their second best suit. Uh, I'm still gonna pass. <laughs> Three clubs. <clears throat> okay, so they support a partner. <clears throat> so that should be like high end of their one no trump forcing and, and five clubs they put. That's good. So they're going to get it for three clubs. <clears throat> we decided not to bid. So that's one no trump forcing. Um, and that's how you play it. All right, here we go. Next hand. Two spades to our right. Okay, so weak bid, generally two of the top three honors, three of the or three of the top five. We don't have anything, so we're gonna pass. Uh, they're gonna do two no trump, which is um, a bid that we you know didn't talk about. It is in the handout, so if you want to review it, it asks partner if they're high end or low end, and if they have an outside ace or king somewhere. And so they're they're showing the high end of their ten, you know, so it's eight, nine, ten and an ace or king of diamonds. It doesn't come up very often. Generally, you end up in four spades. Um, so I just plan to have you work on getting to, using your rule of 17 and getting the game, okay? So let's see if we can, um, see if this hand did have the rule of 17. Okay, so they had ace of clubs. So, so four, eight, 12, 15, and three. Yeah, they have three spades. I'm not really sure why they decided to ask, you know, um, if they're interested in slam maybe, but I doubt it. So generally rule of 17 gets you home. 
So do either support partner or pass in general. You can even do three spades, but you're, you know it's not asking partner if they're high end or low end, it just is trying to take up more space for the opponents, okay? We'll go ahead and bid game if you think you got a shot at it. Six, eight, 11, 14. Okay, so we'll open this one on diamond. One heart. I'm about done talking. Oops. <laughs> Two hearts and they win it. So let's um let's see here. If this was, I think this was supposed to be. Yeah. So this would be if you if you play that bid where you jump um, with a really weak hand, it would have gone one diamond past two spades, okay? And so then they probably would have ended up at, the, at three hearts instead of um, two. So that would have been a nice little disruptive bid. The robots play the two spades as strong, so they didn't do the two spade bid. So one diamond pass, jump to two spades, would be a preemptive bid if that's what you play. It shows like three, four points and a bunch of spades and it's trying to mess them up. And it probably would have worked this time because it might even have gone three hearts and then this hand might've gone to four hearts. So it might've pushed them too high unless it makes and that'd be bad. But to one, two, three. Yeah, it's gonna be close. Anyway, so that's how you would use that bid if you play that with your partner. And again, most, a lot of people are nowadays, but just be sure you talk about it with partner. We're gonna play that as weak or strong. All right, and the last hand for this lesson. Partner opens a spade, five, six, nine. So we got a one no trump forcing bid. We need to respond with six or more. All right, if I, oh boy, I'm kind of stuck. All right, so two diamonds would show uh, six diamonds and six to nine points. I kind of like my hand, but I think that's still what I do. So partner's supposed to pass, and we ended up in two diamonds. This is one advantage of one no trump forcing. You can end up in a really long suit of responders at the two level. Um, and um, doesn't look like we have a great spot. So this is probably as, good of a bad spot as any. You need to have at least six cards in this suit when partner gives you a choice of two suits, okay? Because they're not gonna have very many in your suit, okay? So one note trump forcing, which we had two hands of it today, um, that those are lessons um, seven and eight, okay? If you wanna go back and review those. All right, so preemptive bidding, it's uh, a six card suit. And again, a weak hand, so remember that. Five to 10 high card points. You can vary it by one, all right? So you can have four high card points if you want, or 11 high card points if you want. But 11, I'd like you to make a decision. Do I wanna open this a week two, or do I wanna open this hand? Okay, a good 11 would be ace, king, ace is 11 and a six card suit. I'm gonna open that up in that six card suit all day long, okay? Um, but a bad 11, you know, aceless, my points are all scattered, but, you know, so my points are made up of quacks, queens and jacks. So 11 is kind of on the fence whether you want to do it, 11 and six card suit. Um, but in general, it's going to be 10 high card max and five minimum, all right? And the lower you are, obviously it's a week two, those points would have to be in the suit, okay? Because um, you only have five high card points, you're going to have to have king, queen, 10, you know, I mean, it has to be your points are in the suit. That being said, you open nine or 10, you know, I'd like you to have five points in the suit, but then you also have some outside points when you have nine, you're not gonna have nine points in the suit. I guess you'd have up to 10, ace, king, queen, jack, but generally you don't quite have that good of a quality suit, all right? Um, okay, so week two is the two level, week three is the three level when you have a seven card suit. Hopefully you enjoyed the lesson today. Uh, be sure to um, um, like, like the video, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. That tells YouTube, hey, these videos are good and worth watching. Hopefully a lot of people want to take up playing bridge. It's a great game. Um, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying these lessons. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, thanks again.